Hi everybody and welcome to Photo Mike's Garage. All right, you see my 1973 Camaro behind me and I've got it lifted up uh, on my quick jacks, uh, which I love and I highly recommend. If you have a small garage, they're very maneuverable and they'll get the car up pretty quick. So there we go, the car is up. Now why is the car up? Okay, so basically I've been driving my car just on an occasional basis in the summertime. You know, car shows a little cruise once in a while, not very much. But every time I drive it, I notice that uh, the motor just doesn't seem very responsive and there seems to be vibration uh, that goes through the car. It's, like, it's something that's kind of minor, but it's always been there and it seems like the engine doesn't like to really rev really high. And I've never been able to figure out exactly where this vibration is coming from. I've kind of thought that it was from the drive shaft. So I've got the drive shaft rebalanced years ago. I got the wheels rebalanced years ago. And uh, I just can't figure it out. Uh, but I was just reading online about center force clutches and some of the problems with them. So I put a center force clutch into this car in the 1990s. And it was definitely a step up. The center force clutches had at that time, and I believe they still do, uh, a little ring of weights that were on the uh, diaphragm fingers that the idea was as the uh, disc rotates um, more and more, it actually puts more pressure on the pressure plate. So you can have a lighter pedal feel, but actually have a bit more pressure than you would on a normal clutch. It's a great idea and it makes sense if you think about it. And that's what I put in this car. Uh, definitely an upgrade for me at the time. However, I've read online about some of the problems with center force clutches. And these problems actually make kind of sense. The weights have to move back and forth a little bit. They move slightly in response to the centrifugal force as the clutch is spinning. And uh, people have reported that they kind of stick a little bit so some will move out a bit more than others uh, just due to the friction uh, differences between different weights and therefore that will cause a slight imbalance that you will feel so i'm thinking that that's my problem on this car now a possible solution other than just replacing it with a different clutch if it is a problem is to simply remove those weights you can take that uh, ring of weights off and the clutch will act as a ordinary clutch and yes, you'll probably lose a little bit of clamping force, but it's not substantial. And uh, further research has found that basically Center Force has, at least in the past, they bought these clutches from another reputable company, which I can't remember the name right now, but uh, they bought these clutches and then just modified them at the beginning just with their weights and then, of course, increased the price. So I could just take those ring of weights off and then see if the clutch works. Uh, that's one alternative and that will show me whether or not it has any vibration okay so it's a pretty big job i haven't taken the transmission out of this camaro for at least uh well, i don't know 15 20 years <laughs> long time so and i don't know if i need a cradle or if i can actually just you know bench press this transmission i think they weigh about 140 pounds so they're fairly light compared to a modern transmission but I might need to buy a cradle and a special jack just to get the transmission down. But anyway, today I'm starting to take it all apart. I didn't see any videos on YouTube of how to take a transmission out of an older Camaro. Um, so I might have one of the first ones here. So I'm going to take it, you through it with me. We're going to take this transmission out of this Camaro. So the first step is to get your Camaro up as high as possible. Now you've got to get it high enough so that you can, once you get the transmission off, you can drag it out the back. So that means that uh, perhaps an ordinary uh, lift with your ordinary jacks would not be high enough. You've got to get this sucker up high. So these quick jacks do the job. It's up quite high. Also, you must be safe. Uh, these quick jacks, of course, are safe. They lock into place with the lock bar right here. It's locked into place. It's a good idea if you're working on your car, make sure you have lots of jacks, lots of safety to make sure that the car doesn't crush you. Because if you get crushed by your own car, you're an idiot. Okay, we're under my Camaro. Haven't been here for a while. There's my rear end. So I'm gonna have to take the drive shaft off 
in order to remove this transmission. So, let's see, go down here. All right, so we're gonna have to remove it at the differential right down here by taking these bolts off. There's a strap that holds the uh, trunnion right there. And then we will be able to remove the drive shaft. I believe that's the first step that we should do. All right, there she is. There's my Muncie M20. You know, I forget. It's an either M21 or M20. Not really sure. Uh, M21, M22. Anyway, here's my Muncie transmission. And according to uh, Wikipedia, this transmission weighs 75 pounds. And I'm assuming it's just the transmission, not though the rest there. So I'm going to start by taking off just the transmission, do it step by step. 75 pounds. Heck, I should be able to bench press that, right? But I also have my, my jack here that I can use to support it and then work it backwards. I mean, that's the plan anyway. So we're going to see if this is going to work out or not. Uh, I ain't really sure. Okay, the bolts are out. Now it's time to just move the transmission back and off. Back and off. Okay, I got it off. And it's lying on top of me. That does feel pretty heavy. That does feel pretty heavy. 75 pounds, but I can handle it. Now I just gotta sort of roll it off of me without killing myself or hurting anything. And there she is. She's off. Well, all right. Okay, transmission's off. Okay, that comes right off. Just like that. Okay, now we can see the clutch. We can see the clutch finally. <clears throat> All right, let's examine. This is my center force. Uh, okay. Uh, okay, so as you can see, put this up here for now. This is a cent. This is a center force clutch. This is a center force clutch. And it really shouldn't have too much wear on it. These are the weights that I'm talking about that uh, as the clutch disc spins, it puts more force, more force on the pressure plate. And these are the small weights that move in and out and um, do that. Now, what I wanna know is that are some of these weights stuck in a certain position and therefore unable to, uh, to, is causing a vibration as it spins. Does it spin? It doesn't spin. Why is it spinning? Yeah, as it spins. And I can see right now, and I don't know if you can, but uh, take a look at that. Huh. Oh. Can you see? They're obviously completely not centered at all. Do you see that? Okay, so this is the main reason for this video is to discuss this. It's not so much about removing a transmission and putting a clutch in. Um, I'm no expert on that, but I, I, you can see right here that that ring of weights is completely off center, completely off center. The weights on this side are closer to the center of the clutch the weights on this side right over here are obviously off center. So I'm sure that you can see that. That is the problem that we're talking about here. Now this clutch is relatively new and you can see that we have a problem. That is gonna cause a huge vibration. So it looks like all this effort to take off the transmission has been proven worthwhile.
I mean, the clutch disc, I have to examine that. So we're going to be taking this clutch off now so that I can work on, on the bench. And uh, we'll have to discuss what I'm going to do next. But you can see right now, this is our problem. Yeah. It's a good idea to mark uh, the position on the clutch, the position of the clutch uh, on the fly wheel. So it's a good idea to put it back exactly the way you found it. And so I'm going to mark it and hopefully that will help me put it exactly back where it is. I'm not sure exactly how important that is. That's generally speaking a good idea. So I'm going to do it. Okay, I got the clutch off <laughs> and uh, doesn't look too worn to me. Uh, interesting looking clutch. Very interesting. I got to get this on my bench so I can actually take a look at it. And also I got to look at the flywheel to see what the condition is of that. Okay, there's the flywheel. It doesn't look too bad to me. Now, I don't know if I have to take this off and resurface it or if I can just simply continue to use it as it is. So I'll have to do a little research. But you can see it's not really worn out at all. It still has the machining marks on it when it was last resurfaced. So it's not really that bad. Okay, here you can see clearly what I was talking about inside the car. These are the weights that move. See, they're, they're loose and they can move, they can move to increase the, uh, the clamping force of the clutch. That's the idea, that's the principle behind it. And as you can see, they're all loose, but they're closer to the center of the clutch here, further away. That will create an imbalance. The wear on the diaphragm fingers looks even though. Looks even all the way around. Oh, and here is your pressure plate. And as you can see, it looks in pretty good shape. Like I told you, I just haven't driven this car that much and it's in really good shape. And there's the clutch disc, springs still look good. And then the other surface of the clutch disc, again, looks good. There's a lot of meat left on this clutch. I really don't want to throw this away. It seems to me that this is still very usable. But if you look at the weights, if you can see, let's see, look at the weights. You can see where they have a track where they have moved back and forth. You can see the upper limit of the track here. But you can see it varies by the weight. This one a lot, this one less, this one's a lot less, a lot less. Except it did go very far at one point. You can see all the recent wear marks. And if you look over on this side, you can see that there's no wear marks at all down here at all. Very few. It, so basically it's the weights are moving in an uneven manner a lot on this side not so much on this side that's causing my imbalance i'm sure of it so you can see from this side there you go the wear marks go up about uh, more than half an inch here but down here there's hardly any wear marks at all we turn her over if we turn her over you can clearly let's see Clearly, you can clearly see where the mark is, where the ring, where the ring was down at this point for a long time, such a long time that it actually leaves a mark in the metal on the fingers of the diaphragm. And as you can see, the mark goes up. And on this side, there's hardly any marks at all. On this side, there's hardly any marks at all. So basically, it's been sort of sticking like this. I am so glad to have finally figured out the problem with this car, finally. Okay, so what's the solution? What am I gonna do? 
Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to cut those weights off. And um, I have searched online. Other people have done that. Now, yes, I could just buy a whole new clutch, but there's no reason to do that. This clutch is in really good shape. As I said, I haven't been driving this car very much over the years. And this clutch, as you can see, is in great shape. So I'm going to reuse it. I'm just going to cut the weights off. A little bit of search online shows that the center force, um, uh, the weight system adds about 10% extra clamping force. Uh, so by taking the weights off, I'm going to lose 10% clamping force. I'm not worried about that. Uh, this car is not used under too much extreme conditions. I'm not drag racing. I'm not really uh, pushing it that hard. I want this car to be a nice cruising car that I can take and not worry and not have any more vibration. So I'm just going to cut the weights off. I'm going to lose a bit of clamping force, but then the clutch will work just fine. I hope. Maybe. Now, of course, there are people that have center force clutches that say that they are the bomb, that they're great. No vibration. Love them. That's good. Good for you. Uh, also, keep in mind that this center force clutch is an earlier one. This is from the 1990s or earlier. I don't even know. Anyway, it's from a long time ago, before some of you guys are probably even born. And the newer center force clutches uh, may have addressed this problem. I saw some pictures of the newer ones, and they look a little different. So maybe they've addressed this problem. So... If you want to go for a center force clutch, you go for it. But for me, I'm going to cut the weights off. So to take the weights off, very simple. I'm going to take a pair of pliers of some sort and I'm going to bend the wire so the weights will come off. And uh, if necessary, I'll cut the wire, but we'll see if I can just bend it to get it to come off. Okay. <laughs> All right, weights are off. The weights are off. Now it's just a regular clutch. My next step is to sort of clean this up. Uh, use some alcohol on the uh, surfaces and uh, put it all back together again, basically. Get out of here, you weights. Get out of here. We don't need you anymore. You didn't help us. You're useless. Get out of here. Go, go, just go. Making sure there's no fingerprints, no grease on this surface at all. Okay, the clutch is going back on. And what you need to put a clutch back on is to um, sort of put it on loosely. And uh, then you have to have a clutch alignment tool, which I happen to have. It's basically, it fits into the... Um, uh, Basically, it fits into the bearing that's in the, uh, or the hole that's in the uh, flywheel. Ugh. Flywheel, and then it's got this cone-shaped, this cone-shaped device. You press that in, and that will center the uh, actual disc that's inside there. It'll center the disc as you tighten up the bolts. So what you want to do is tighten up the bolts enough so that the disc can still move. It just being just just uh, held in there slightly so you can still move the disc with this cone you push this in push the cone in and then tighten up and you've got a centered clutch disc inside so it's very important to have this tool um, if you don't uh, when you go to put the transmission on it's not going to line up with the hole uh, and it's not going to be uh, you're not going to be able to get the transmission on so you got to have this hole perfectly centered for the clutch disc on the inside. <sighs> also, make sure that you have the clutch disc in the proper orientation. In other words, so that uh, usually there's one surface, the clutch disc, which is fairly flat, and the other surface has the springs. You can see as a little, it's sort of uh, above the, uh, the pad. That is usually going out. 
So test fit it before you bolt everything up to make sure that you've got the clutch disc in the proper direction. Otherwise, you will not be able to bolt this up at all. All right. This book, I've had this for years. Uh, Haynes Camaro, 1970 through 81. This is invaluable. Now, I know everybody gets things on the interwebs right now, but this is what I recommend you guys go and get. 19 bucks, and there you go. It's got incredible, useful information from back in the day. And I'm going to use this right now to find the torque values on those flywheel bolts. Clutch pressure plate bolts, 35 foot pounds right there. Transmission case to clutch bell housing bolts, 55. Clutch bell housing to engine bolts, 30. Okay, there we go. All right, this is the original bell housing for my 1973 Z20. I'm gonna bolt this on first and then bolt the transmission on second. And also while I was here, I checked the numbers on this transmission. I've done that before, but I just wanted to redo it. And I uh, don't know if you can see, the numbers tell the story. This is the original transmission. The last three digits are 307. Same as the engine, same as the car. This is a numbers matching Z28. I'm so happy. Okay, this is a Muncie M20 uh, wide ratio transmission. That's what she is. Anyway, let's put the bell housing on now. Um, everything is pretty new. I'm not going to change the uh, throw out bearing um, because, like I said, this clutch and everything was pretty new and I haven't driven the car much. I'm just going to reuse everything, but I'm going to put a new coating of high temperature grease, high temperature grease on everything and then bolt this sucker up. Hi everybody, um, I've almost got everything done underneath the uh, Camaro here. Um, don't know if you can see, it's got the transmission in. You saw that I sort of pressed it up and in. All the, uh, the bell housing bolts are in. I've even got the inspection cover over. Um, these were 55 foot pounds to mount the transmission to the bell housing. And I've got the, um, Transmission mount mounted. Uh, I think it's 45 foot-pounds for these guys and 25 foot-pounds for the nuts that hold in the transmission mount. So that's all done. And if I go back a little further, it's kind of dark. Sorry. I've got the uh, I've got the drive shaft installed. And if we go back a little further, it's getting dark right now. But anyway, um, and see, I've got the uh the straps over the uh the u-joint here to mount it to the differential this was uh, 25 i believe 25 or 20 foot pounds for these little guys and there's four of them and i mounted as you can see got the mark here got the mark here everything's lined up the way it was when i took it off okay that's all installed so i'm almost ready to test my transmission and see if the vibration's gone because I removed the weights from the the center force clutch here.
Okay, it looks like I took that uh, road a little too fast and scraped the underside of my car on that bump. So, yeah. But that was a lot of fun driving the car for the first time in so many months. It's, it's a real thrill. Um, and it looks like removing the weights from my center force clutch has eliminated that small vibration that I had. Uh, at least that's what I can tell so far. So if you do have a small vibration with your center force clutch, it could be the weights. The weights. Anyway, thanks for watching Photo Mike's Garage. I will see you next time.